Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. All right. So, trying to get myself together here. Just a moment. Trying to get myself together just to be able to do this thing here. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I see you there. You may. Okay, hold on. I'm going to send you a wave so you know I'm seeing you. Okay. Melody, welcome, welcome, welcome you all, everybody. Um, so this is so, so important today, guys. Like, honest to God, I read that question yesterday and my skin just starts going. Like, I need, we need to talk, okay? We honestly to God need to talk. Praise God. Praise God. Good morning. Because it is so vital to our salvation, our faith, our faith is so vital to our salvation and i'm promising you right now i've told you guys over and over every time i do my videos i don't consider myself an expert on anything okay trina welcome and i want you guys to invite people just invite people because i want this to be a conversation i want you guys to type your questions um as we're going on if you have scriptures that you want us to look at god is going to speak to us today he's going to as you know, the, the topic that I gave for this, this here today is Jesus God or not. Let the Bible settle the debate, okay? And so I, I fell asleep yesterday. I was very tired after work, but then I woke up around three o'clock. And ever since then, I've just been going through the Bible, trying to just make sure that I have something that I can say. The word of God is very clear on the, the status of who Jesus is, okay? Now, if I start out, let me just praise God. Everybody just lift your hand and just give a wave. Just give a wave to the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. Just go ahead and just invite the presence of the Lord. Invite the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you because we know that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so, Father, I thank you right now for liberty in our spirit, God, that we will be open to receive. Father, your word today, we ask that our ears, O oh God, will be unstopped so that we will hear, that our eyes, O oh God, you will touch our eyes so that we will see, my God, the light of your word today. Let nothing hinder our understanding of your word today, O oh Father. Let not self itself get in the way. I humble myself before you right now, God. And as I said, I don't take credence for anything. I am not an expert on anything. But I know the word of God is for real. It is true. Praise God. And so I want to thank God right now for what he's about to speak to us through his word. I read the scriptures, guys. I try myself my best not to try to study or to, to um, try to formulate any natural way of how I'm going to present this. Because I want God to speak. I don't want to speak. I, I don't want to speak. I want God to speak to us. Amen? And so I'm going to ask you guys, and normally I don't do this. I'm like saying, okay, share, 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 whatever. But I think it's important. I think people need to hear the word of the Lord and that uh, we should be able to have this debate. This is what this platform is all about, really. It is for us to really talk about Jesus. Amen? So before I get started, I wanted to um, just read, well, just pretty much read something that I have written down here, which is the fact that, I personally, I believe the Bible, okay, to be the inspired word of God. And that's what the scripture says. So if God says it, it is so. If I'm going to believe the Bible, I have to believe every letter, every line, every jot, every tittle. I have to believe the word of God, right? So I believe that it is the inspired word of God, the infallible word of God. Infallible there means that it cannot fail, the Bible is the only God-given authority which man possesses. And therefore, all doctrine, faith, hope, and all other instructions for the church must be based upon the, harmonized, um, the harmony of the Bible. It must harmonize with the Bible. So if I come up with something today that is not in sync with the Word of God, you can just write that one off and scratch it off your list. It has to be the Word of God. So this is in agreement with the doctrine, praise God, uh, that, that the, the, the doctrine of the Bible 
everything that the prophet that the people of the bible spoke was in line with what jesus spoke jesus doesn't come and say anything that was not of old and nobody all the the apostles they were based on the doctrine of jesus christ so we have to believe this word amen so that's just to settle that part for starters right now i oh my goodness where's my bible let me get the bible the infallible word oh god of god Again, the word of God, the Bible says that holy men of God, holy men of God spake as they were led, right? As they were instructed by the Holy Ghost. That's how the Bible was written. Trust me when I tell you, I've read many books in my life. And no matter how many books you've read, you're not going to find another book that will speak to your spirit like this Bible. The word of God will speak directly to your spirit. Every other book, you can read it, put it down, go back to it, hardly remember what you read. This Bible will speak to your spirit. It speaks to every condition in your life. It will speak to every situation. And no matter what it is that you're going through, this Bible has an answer for it. Praise God. It is the infallible word of God. Anyways, I'm trying to calm down. <laughs> trying to calm down. Oh my God. All right. So, um... I, I didn't even have a chance to, sh to share anyways, but anyways, I'm asking you guys to share, share it for me so that other people can come in and the conversation can go on, right? So how do we start? I have a few things that I have opened up here, okay? And I'm going to be looking through, looking at these and just trying to um, go through scripture by scripture, what the Bible says about Jesus being God, because that's the question, right? Um, you may? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but that's what the Bible says, okay? That was the question. So, one of the one of the one of the main thing that I was looking at last night was how um God revealed himself in the Old Testament, at least one of the ways that God revealed himself in the Old Testament and then how Jesus Christ um express himself like how how was jesus presented how did jesus christ present himself um in the new testament and we will also see some of how we will see him being presented in the revelation of john okay the book of the revelations which is to yet to be fulfilled so we're looking at this to see is jesus really god so in um in uh, exodus and i'm going back to my my book of notes that i have i was making last night because obviously there are many scriptures that if you read them out of context, you're not going to understand it. There's also scriptures you will read, but if you don't get the revelation of Jesus Christ, if God, <laughs> as the Bible calls it, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revelation of Jesus Christ, not Jacqueline's revelation, not anybody else's revelation. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So if we don't get that revelation, if it is not given to us by the help of the Holy Spirit, we will have a problem understanding and that's okay because you know you can't understand the word without the holy spirit it needs the holy spirit in order to um to get us to get that understanding praise god so i was thinking this morning about how i got to know really know that jesus is indeed god right when i i, I have another video that i did where i talked about how i came to the lord okay I went to church and I didn't go there to be saved. I go there to criticize somebody. Okay. I was 11 years old, but in any event, the word of God was preached from the book of John, John chapter 10, where the preacher said that, you know, Jesus Christ is the door. And by him, if any man enters in, you know, you can go in and out and find pastor. You will not be able to come up some other way because if you do, you are a thief and a robber. That's the message that I received that brought me to salvation. Now that was 11 years old. I gave my life to the Lord because in my young mind, I just didn't want Jesus or God to see me as a thief and a robber. It wouldn't, I wouldn't want that, right? So I wanted to come the proper channel and to come through Jesus Christ. And somehow God spoke to me through that word. And I tell you, few, not long afterwards, I was still the same age, I went to my bed and I had a vision and in the vision, I was hearing music that I've never heard in my entire life. It was a, an orchestra that I've never heard. I don't think that type of music exists in life, okay? But it was the most beautiful form of music that I was hearing. And it was like a band that was playing. And the song that they were singing, and I was singing along, I was singing the words to the song, was, I have married a true and living God. 
Yes, I've married a true and living God. That's it. That was just the words. I've married a true and living God. Yes, I've married a true and living God. So that is how God came to me to let me know that this Jesus that I accepted when I came to the Lord was indeed the true and living God. Amen. That was my revelation. I didn't, nobody actually preached that to me. That was given to me in a vision. Now, when you search the scriptures, however, you begin to see that Jesus Christ, this Jesus that we have heard of, praise God, that was manifested, that came into the world. He came in in flesh. And I have mentioned before in other videos, it, the reason Jesus came in the flesh was because he needed to take on the form of man because man had sinned and man were guilty and had to pay a penalty of sin. And the penalty that sin was demanding was death. Now, man could not pay the price for his own sin because his blood was tainted with sin. In order for the sacrifice that would be acceptable to God was to be holy enough to be acceptable as the payment for sin, it had to take a blood that was without sin. That was the only other option. God had to come up with a plan of his own. And his plan was, the Bible says, he searched heaven. He looked into hell. He searched heaven, earth, everywhere. And there was none that was found worthy. None that was found worthy. So he himself had to come up with a plan that he, God, he himself would actually come into the world and pay the penalty for man's sin. How can God die? God cannot die unless God find a way so he could have blood in his body. God came up with the idea that he would put on flesh. And he would come into the world and he would die for humanity. The name Jesus, the name Jesus that we know of Jesus. Now, people have it to say, well, how is it that he's Jesus? Back in the days they spoke Greek and there was no Jesus existing in Greek. Okay, um, Yeshua um, HaMashiach, that is how they would say it, or Joshua. Yeah, Joshua or Yeshua, right? However, we are English speakers, so the tra translation of the Bible, if I took my name, I'm Jacqueline, but if they translated it to another, another language, it will be another pronunciation, another name that would still be Jacqueline in the English language. In French, I'm called Jacqueline. Okay, Jacqueline, that's me in French. I don't know in other, other languages, whatever it might be. There are people in French that would be English, Jack. In French, it would be Jacques. They're still Jack. I don't care if you pronounce it in English or in French. So if you pronounce the name of Jesus in Greek and you pronounce it in English, it is the same person that we are talking about. Now, are we clear on that? Praise God. Now, um, <laughs> so Jesus Christ is the name by which God chose to reveal himself. And when we say Jesus Christ, we're saying it in English. I'm speaking to you in English, okay? So Jesus Christ was the name by which he decided to reveal himself. This name, Jesus, is an inherited name, okay? It's inherited in the sense that it existed before the Jesus came upon the scene. This name was the name that God... God had before. So Jesus, the name Jesus didn't just happen when Jesus showed up on the scene. This name existed before that. He was Jesus. God, that's the name of, of God is Jesus. And when Jesus came into the world, it was God who put on flesh and stepped into time. And therefore he came under the same name. And um, because I, I've gone through another video on this, I'm not trying to go over the same video altogether because I have the scriptures, guys. I have the scriptures, okay? Now, let's get started. So, I'm looking at, I talked about John in the book of John. The book of John is where Jesus Christ actually is revealed as God. The whole book of John. If you want to know if Jesus is God, read the book of John, okay? St. John. So the book of St. John is where Jesus came in and he stepped on the scene as God. And John chapter 10 and verse 33. Let's take a look at John chapter 10. And I'm, I'm flipping over there. 
John chapter 10 and verse 33. Let's see what it says. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews was also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? Okay, so this is, um, I'm looking back at, um, at uh, the, the story of Lazarus, where Jesus Christ raised Lazarus from the dead. God bless you, um, evangelist. God bless you. So um, the word Jesus Christ in the book of, um, here we go, the book of John chapter 13 and verse 3. Let's go there. John 13. I have so much notes that it's just John 13 and verse 3. It says, And Jesus, knowing, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, okay, and that he was come from God and went to God, riseth up from supper and laid aside his garment, took a towel and girded himself. So this is where Jesus actually washed the disciples' feet. But here it says that Jesus Christ, the Fa God the Father, had given all things into the hands of Jesus. Okay? All things into the hand of Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, so Jesus is considered teacher and Lord. Teacher and Lord. And in, in uh, the book of, um, hold on, Lord means Greek. In the Greek word means kurios, kurios, okay? And kurios means God or the in supreme authority. Kurios means God in supreme authority. So if you're calling Jesus Lord, you're literally calling him God in supreme authority. And that is John 13, 3, where it tells us that God had given all things into the hand of Jesus. Now, why would God put everything into the hand of Jesus, right? If he himself isn't God that has stepped out into the form of the flesh. He stepped out of time, out of eternity rather, into time in the packaging of the flesh. So all things was given into his hands. Praise God. In Exodus chapter 13, and I'm going to start, I'm going to go on from there. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. Exodus chapter three, uh, three and verse 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is where God first revealed himself to uh, Moses as the I am, right? So imagine somebody asks you your name and you say, my name is I am. What does that mean? I am, right? And he said, he told him to tell the people of Israel that I am has sent me unto you. Now, if I am sent me, that's a name, right? God is saying, my name is I am. I am. I sent, I'm the one who's sending you, right? So that was the name that Moses had to take to them and say, who's, when, he, when the Pharaoh's asking him, who, you know, who is sending you? What power you're coming by? He says, I am sent me. I am. So God is considered, classified himself as I am right? In the book of Exodus, right? That's God. So if you hear I am, then you hear, you know that you're talking about God, right? Now, as we go on to the book of John, I told you that the book of John, Jesus Christ is revealed as God, right? In the book of, of John, we see so many times where Jesus Christ used that same phrase, I am. I am. When God says I am, he's saying, I am everything that you could ever need me to be. I am everything to the highest point of perfection. Whatever you need God to be in your situation, God is. Right? There is no limitations to who he is. That's what he's saying when he says, I am. I am present. I exist. And I can be anything that you want me to be in your situation because he has no limits. So here we have um, Jesus in the book of John, John chapter 14 and verse 6. And Jesus said, said to him, I am the way. Think about it. I am. He comes as the I am. But in this part, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Right? Nobody can get to the Father unless you pass through Jesus. The Father is in Jesus. If you want to get to the Father, you got to go through Jesus, right? Because Jesus, the flesh, is just the packaging for the Father that's inside of him, all right? Because that's how God had to come into the world. 
Praise God. So that you and I could see him. Praise God. Praise God, Veronica. Welcome. Welcome. So, and if you guys have questions, I'm not sure if I can see your questions. If you're, if you're making any comments, make comments so I can see. So I can see that I, um, I can see that I, I see somebody say, God bless you. Okay, good. So in, um, Roman in, in, sorry, in John chapter eight and verse 58, Jesus again said to them, whoever he was speaking, he said to them, truly, truly, I say to you before Abraham was, I am. Now this is Jesus, the same Jesus that I told you that God says, I put everything into his hands. Here he is telling the, 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 the disciples, he's saying to them that truly, truly, that means of a truth, of a truth. I say to you, before Abraham was, good morning, Veronica, before Abraham was, I am. How can he make that statement? That's a dramatic statement. That's a big statement for anybody to make, to say before Abraham. Remember, Abraham is the father of all nations, right? The, Abraham is the father of all nations. So if Jesus, who happened to came just some 2,000 years ago, was able to say that he existed before Abraham. Who existed before Abraham? Right? Jesus is saying, me, Jesus, I was before Abraham. Amen? In John 15 and verse 5, he comes again as another, I am. Remember I said, I am. He's without limit. He will be anything that you need him to be. You need him to be um, your, your, your truth. He is truth. He is life. He is the way. John 15, 5, I am the vine. You are the branches, he says. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he is, he it is that bears much fruit. So Jesus is saying, I am the vine in which you are able to bear your fruits. Amen. This is him revealing himself again as the I am. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 8. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord. Alpha means beginning. Omega means ending. So he says, I am the Alpha and Omega, says who? Read it again. Says the Lord God. The Lord God. Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Who is, who was. Jesus says before Abraham was, I am. Who is to come, the Almighty. These are very key terms because we're going to find where these terms are used specifically for Jesus Christ. In John 11 and verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the, this is, this is with uh, Lazarus. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Here he is revealed as the I am resurrection. I am life. So when God told them back in Exodus that I am sent you, he is all that. He's saying I am. But now he comes and he starts to add to the I am what he is. I am resurrection, Jesus says. I am life. Praise God. In John 6 and verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Hallelujah. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is God being Jesus Christ revealing himself as God the I am. In John 8 and verse 12, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Praise God. John 15, 1, I am the true vine. We mentioned that. And my father is the vine dresser. Now, it sounds like when you hear that, okay, so Jesus is saying, I am the husband man. My father is the vine dresser. That sounds like two people, right? But I'm trying to tell you that Jesus is the, is the expressed image of God. The Father. Jesus is the expressed image. What does that mean? Without the body, Jesus, coming on earth, you would not have an expression of who God is. You would not be able to see him. Jesus expressed him. So that when you look, you see a body. God does not have a body. But in order for him to come and die upon the cross, he had to put on a body. Praise God. Let me see if I can, hmm, blessed be the name of Jesus. 
So anyways, I, I think I'm going to continue on this trend that I have here because I think this is very profound. Then we go to Revelations 21 and verse 6. And he said to me, it is done. This is the it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. This is where Revelation, Jesus already said he's Alpha and Omega. And here we're seeing it over in Revelations. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. Jesus said to the woman at the well, when he asked the woman at the well for water, and what did she say? She says, oh, you don't have anything to draw with. You know, and Jesus said to her, if you knew, she says to him, well, you are a Jew. I'm a Gentile. The Jews have no dealings with the Gentiles. How is it you're asking me for water? Jesus says, if you knew who it was that is asking you for water, then you would have, you would have asked of me. And I will give you that water that would be in you, a well of water springing up onto everlasting life. This was Jesus standing there in the flesh saying to the woman that you don't understand who you're talking to. Because had you known that you're literally looking at God, had you known that you're literally talking to me, the life giver, and the one that can give you spring of water, how do I know this? Over in Revelations 21, 6. And he said to me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end to the thirsty. I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. This is God saying that he will give to the thirsty the water of life payment. And Jesus already confirmed that in with the woman at the well and saying you should if you just know who you were talking to had you known that you were still talking to me the god that of the revelations 21 6 then you would have known to ask me of water and i will give you that spring of water that will be in, in you and will spring up unto everlasting life in matthew 28 20 Jesus says, teaching them to observe all that i have commanded and behold i am I am with you always to the end of the age. This I am just keep popping up throughout the ministry of Jesus Christ because he was literally the God that was revealing God. He was revealing God in the flesh. He was revealing God. He's the express image of, the, of, of, of God. Jump over again to Revelations 1, 17 to 19. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. This one was very deep for me last night. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he said, he laid his right hand on me saying, fear not. I am the first and the last and the living one who died. Listen carefully, guys. I am the first and the last. So John was seeing this vision and John see this person. And he, it was so much glorious or whatever it looked like when he saw it, that he says he fell at his, at his feet as though he was dead. He passed out literally. But he, the, 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 he laid his, hand, his right hand on me saying, fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, listen carefully, I died and behold, I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and Hades, right? Therefore, the things that you have seen, those that are and those that are to take place after this. When, when did God die? When did God die? My God Almighty, hallelujah! Shando Rokoria Basaya. When did God Echo? Shut up. When did God die? When did God die? If it wasn't when Jesus showed up on the scene and gave his life upon Calvary. That alone should do it for y'all. That alone, that alone just did it for me. Hey, mama, mama, ho, sa. John 6, 47 to 50. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. Yes? I am the bread of life. I am. I am bread of life. And it's, it, there's many places he talks about him being the manna that came down from heaven. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is Jesus speaking, eh? And he says, this is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and, and not die. Jesus saying, God had told them that he was going to send manna. In the Old Testament, we see where God sent the, the physical manna. Right, the physical manner when they were coming out of their out of Egypt. Egypt is a representation of sin, right? So they would come out of Egypt out of their bondage, praise God. And in the wilderness, they cried out to God, God sent manna and fed them in the wilderness, right? So that manna was a type of Christ. It was a, a type of Christ which is to come, which is the bread of life, which is coming down from heaven. 
Praise God Almighty. So Jesus Christ was that bread of life that came down from heaven in John 6, 4 to 7 to 50. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the man in the wilderness and they did. They died rather. This is the bread that comes from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. Leviticus 19, 28. Hold on, let me see. He says, you shall not make any cuts on your body or for the dead or tattoo yourselves. Why? Because I am the Lord. So in Leviticus, God revealed to them, himself to them as I am the Lord. The Lord, right? And we call Jesus Lord. God himself called him Lord. David called him Lord. And the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies my footstool. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Leviticus, Leviticus chapter um, 19. That's the one I just read. So he is Lord. Genesis 15, 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, says, fear not, Abraham, I am. This is the Old Testament, again, where God is revealing himself as I am. Saying to Abraham, I am your shield. He was, remember, he says, Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. And here Abraham comes around on the scene and this same God who is saying to Abraham, fear not Abraham, I am your shield, your reward shall be very great. He says, I am your shield. Right? Isaiah 41 10, fear not for I am with you, be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Praise God. And, and we just read in Revelations where when they saw the revelation of Jesus Christ, that just, some, just in Revelation where we just read, where he, he fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon him. Here he talks about him, hope holding him with the right hand of his righteousness. John 16 verse 50 to 71. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. This is another one. I am the living bread, Jesus says, that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, I will, sorry, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for, give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus says, I'm going to give my flesh as the life for this world. The Jews then disputed among themselves saying, how can this man give his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day. Who has power to raise up anybody on the last day? Who has power to put people into heaven or to put them into hell? Jesus says, I, I am going to raise you up on the last day. John 14 verse 1 to 31. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to pre pre prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you unto myself. That where I am, you may be also, and you know the way where I am going. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we do not know the way where you're going. How can we know the way? You understand? But Jesus says to them, I am. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Praise God. It, again in John 10, 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus keeps revealing himself over and over as the I am of the Old Testament. God came to them before he brought them out of, out of Egypt. And I said, Egypt represents sin. God came to Abraham and revealed himself to Abraham as I am. That was it. I am. But Jesus stepped on the scene to bring us out of our Egypt, which is sin. The bondage of sin. Jesus stepped on the scene and over and over again, he starts revealing himself as the I am. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Psalm 139 and verse, verse uh, 14. Praise God. Actually, Psalms 103 and verse 1 to 2 says, um, of David, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity. Amen. It is Jesus Christ who is able to forgive your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love. 
and mercy. Jesus was the one who was healing and he heals our diseases. Praise God. Who did, when did Jesus, when did God actually heal the disease of the people? Through Jesus Christ. He redeems our life from the pit when he died upon Calvary's cross. He crowns us with steadfast love and mercy when he resurrected. Praise God. He satisfies us with good things so that our youth is renewed as the eagle. Praise God. Praise God. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But that's not, that one doesn't even um, go there. But in anything, I am hoping that you guys are getting some of this today. So let me look over here in my book. In my book that I have here. John 8. Let me look at John 8 and chapter 24. John 8 and verse 24. Whew, the book of John, man. The book of John, the book of John, John 8 and verse 24. Actually, John 8, I'm going to read a little bit more than the book of 24 for you because it, it was so powerful when I was reading that last night. John 8, I'm going to read from about um, the, the, uh, the 11th verse, okay? John chapter 8. So G she said, no man, Lord. Okay, this was the woman that was... Um, caught in adultery, right? This was the time when the woman was caught in adultery and they brought her to Jesus and said, you know, this is what she's done. And Jesus wrote down on the ground and wrote. And then she, when he stood up, everybody was gone. Nobody to accuse her. He turned to her and says, there nobody to accuse you. And Jesus says, and she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Okay, great. Now verse 12 says, then spake Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. Another I am. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is Jesus saying, I am, that was from the Old Testament, I'm being revealed to you now as the I am light of the world. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, thou, hear, thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I be a record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came and whither I go, And but ye cannot tell whence I came and whither I go. You don't know where I come from and where I'm going. You don't know, but I know. And so in verse 15, he says, ye judge after the flesh. You're judging after the flesh. You're just looking at the flesh and you're judging after the flesh. But Jesus says, I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I, I, I am the Father that sent me. I'm not alone. It is when you look at my flesh, you're seeing flesh. You're judging by the flesh. But what you don't understand is that in this flesh is God. God is actually dwelling in this flesh. Praise God Almighty. This is just the packaging. Praise God. And so... Jesus says, but it is also written in your law that the testimony of two of two men is true, right? I am one. Jesus says, it is written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. Jesus says, I am one, right? That bear witness of myself. And the father that sent me beareth witness of me. So there you have two. He says, me, this me, Jesus, I bear witness of myself. But the father that sent me, he bears witness of me. And so then said they unto him, show us the father. Where is the father? So they're like, okay, great. So we see you, but show us the father then. Show us the father. Jesus answered, ye neither know me nor my father. You don't know me and you don't know my father. Because he says, if you had known me, you should have known my father. Why? Because we are one. Jesus says, if you know me, you should know my father. Also, these words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple and no man laid hands on him for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus un, um, again unto them, I go my way, I'm going my way and you shall seek me and shall not and shall die. Listen to this carefully, guys. You shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Is he going to kill himself? Well, they think he's going to kill himself. But Jesus says, nobody takes my life. I lay it down of myself. That's another story. Because he saith, whether I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, ye are from beneath. This is what Jesus was saying to those who would not believe him. He says, you are from beneath. I am from above. Jesus said, you are from beneath. I am from above. Those who don't believe that Jesus is God right? You are of this world, Jesus says. I am not of this world. Jesus is otherworldly. 
He is not of this world, praise God. I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe, you believe not that I am he. If you can't believe that Jesus is God, the Bible says you shall die in your sins. And when I, I started, I asked myself the question, when he says, I am he, what does he mean by that? And he actually is referring to the, to the fact that he came as the Messiah. He came as the Messiah, the savior of the world. God is the one that saves us, beloved one. It is he that is savior. And Jesus says, I am he. And if you don't believe it, you shall die in your sins. Praise God. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. From the beginning I told you who I was. I told you that I was the Messiah. I was the one that came. I am God Almighty. Jesus saying, I told you. I'm the same one. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true and I speak to the world those things that I have heard. So Jesus is saying to them, you, if you don't believe, if you can't believe that I am he, that I am actually God manifested in flesh, you shall die in your sins. Praise God. Praise God. Um, let's look, to, look over at uh, St. John chapter 4, 26 and just to make sure. St. John chapter 4 and verse 26 over here. Verse 26 says, from verse uh, 26, 25 says, The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. Right? Then he is come. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I am. I that speak unto thee am he. I am the Messiah that you're expecting to come. Jesus said that to the woman. Jesus says, I am the Messiah that you're expecting to come. And so that was what Jesus was referring to over in John chapter eight, when he says to them, I have told you from the beginning that I am he. And if you cannot believe that I am he, then you shall die in your sins. It is unfortunate, beloved ones, because the only thing that is separating us from God is faith. That is it. That is to come to the obedience. I think I read somewhere in the scriptures, you talk about coming to the obedience of faith. To the obedience of faith. Where did I uh, note that? So that you should come to the, for us to come to the obedience of faith. Praise God. Because if you can't have faith and, and, and come to the obedience of faith, you are still in disobedience. When we sinned, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, sin plunged them into disobedience. And, uh, or actually disobedience, it was their disobedience that plunged them into sin. So now they're in disobedience and disobedience is a, a cause separation from God. So Jesus Christ came to bring us back into obedience. To bring us back in alignment with God. And Jesus says to them, if you cannot believe that I am he, then you shall die in your sin. Because what? You're still in disobedience. Because it takes the obedience of faith in order to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How are you going to be obedient if you don't believe in the one that's the Messiah that came? Jesus Christ, the righteous. Oh my God. I'm <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Let me see if I can if I can find some more. Revelations chapter one. Revelations. Let me look at Revelations chapter one. Let's see what we have over here in Revelations chapter one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is I decided that today I'm just gonna deal with the, the fact that Jesus revealed himself as the I am. Right? Because that is a very vital part. We, I, um, if God came to the, in the beginning to them and told Abraham that he's I am, and then Jesus came and everywhere Jesus revealed himself as God, he says, I am, I am, I am. He is literally, and you will never find anywhere in the scriptures where somebody called Jesus Lord and he corrects them. Where they bow down to worship him and he tell them, get up, don't do that. But you will find places where angels, when somebody would bow before an angel, the angel will say, see, you do it not. Don't do it because they know that they are not God and they will not take the glory. But Jesus never stopped anybody from bowing before him. Jesus never stopped that woman from kissing his feet and washing his feet with their hair. There were people marveling saying, oh my God, how is he letting this woman talk? Jesus said, no, let her alone. Come on, because Jesus know who he was. He is deserving of glory. He is deserving of worship. He is deserving of lordship. And I mean... He is worthy. So he never stopped anybody from worshiping him. 
Otherwise, he would have been taking the glory. And Jesus never took the glory from the Father. He always says, me and the Father, we are one and the same. We are one and the same. You understand? Me and the Father, we are one. And what, what did I say I was going to look at just now? Revelations chapter 1. Praise God. Revelations chapter 1. There's so much in this word, man. I mean, whew, Revelations chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Revelations chapter 1, and I'm looking from about verse 7. Behold, Jesus, uh, let me see. And have made us make made us kings and priests with unto God and his father to him be glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. So it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. That's Jesus, right? Talking about Jesus, right? Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. That's talking about Jesus, the coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus, it says, I am Alpha. Jesus has told you over and over, he's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning, he's the end. He's the first, he's the last. He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom of patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. So he had been set, sent away on the isle called Patmos because he was being a testimony for Jesus Christ. He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. And these words are written in red. You know that everywhere in the Bible that you see written in red, these are the words of Jesus. So in, even in Revelations, when it was Jesus speaking, he was written in, his words were written in red. Right? He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And when I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. So this was the, the vision, right? If, um, if I came to you guys and I told you that I got a vision, and I'm telling you, you all, everybody gets so excited about visions and prophets these days, and the prophet is come prophesy to me. But I was saying to somebody this morning, I said, the Bible, Jesus is in the Bible, is, is told, we are told that Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. The Bible is the word of God, the infallible word of God. So it is the prophecy of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is prophesying to us. And people are still refusing to believe this prophecy. But yet we will look at a natural man today. If I told you today I was a prophetess and I wanted to give a prophet word to you, everybody would hang on for dear life for my word. But I'm trying to tell you, and, and I could tell you anything and tell you that God is telling it to me to tell you. And you hang on to it. But yet the Bible is telling you Everything that Jesus, the priest and the prophet has said, and people are refusing to believe it. Let the Bible prophesy to you. Let the Bible prophesy to you. Right? And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man clothed with a garment this is this is what the bible is telling you what john saw john says i saw one like unto the son of man in the bible when it says son of man it's talking about jesus son of man because he came through the flesh of a man he came to the flesh of humanity rather he he was born of mary and he put he was like a man walking on the earth so he's called son of man and he's also called son of god amen because he was 100% man and he was 100% God. If, if he's son of man, it's because he carries the DNA. Praise God. He had on flesh. He had blood like anybody else. So he had the, the, the fleshy man. His fleshy body was that of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a person. And he had the DNA of um, his mother, Mary. But Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ as the son of God, literally was the God um, inside of him. And that, in, that God inside of him had the DNA of God. He had the DNA of God. If you're a God's child, you have, you, 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 you are, you, if you're a son of God, then you have the God DNA. Praise God. So in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. 
Praise God. His head and his hairs were white like wool and as white as snow, and his eyes were as the flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burnt in a furnace. Praise God. And his voice was a sound of many waters. And, and there's a lot of things that you have to understand about scripture. When you read stuff, even the fact about his feet, a lot of people want to talk about the fact that Jesus was a black man because his feet looked like furnace. Well, the Bible is not talking about whether he's black or white. The Bible, when the Bible talks about his feet looking like it was like fine brass, brass represents judgment. Judgment. So those feet that are stepping out in judgment, judgment, Jesus is coming back and, and he says it's appointed unto man once to die, but after death, the judgment. So when Jesus steps back into this place, he's coming back in judgment. Never you mind whether he's black or white. You need to pay attention about the fact that he's coming back to judge the world. And he says, as I read to you earlier, that if you do not believe that he, I am he, you shall die in your sins. And it is appointed unto man once to die, but after death comes the judgment. Somebody, you need to hear the word today because this is very important. I'm sick and tired of people trying to water down the scriptures and talking about who is black and who is white. Who cares? Do I care if Jesus is white? Do I care if he's black? The Bible says you can make no image of him. You don't have no image of him in your brain when you're worshiping Jesus Christ. You're worshiping God Almighty. Praise be to God. His hair is, okay, so, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice was the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars out of the mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Amen? A sharp two-edged sword. Jesus is coming back. To, trust me. You don't want to be caught. You don't want to be caught outside. You don't want to be caught not believing. in, in it's Still in disobedience. Because you had not come into the obedience of the faith. Jesus have mercy. His countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, John says, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, fear not, I am the first and the last. This is the same Jesus that we talked about. It is him that John is seeing coming in the future. And this is the same Jesus that is going to step out in time. And Jesus said unto them in, the, in, in, in John's vision, Jesus says, fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he <clears throat> that liveth. And was dead. When did God ever die? Come on somebody. And behold I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen. And the things which are. And the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars. Which thou sawest in my right hand. And the seven golden candlestick. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The pastors. Praise God. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. There's a message that is going out to the churches today. And we need to preach the word of God in season and out of season. We need to let people know that Jesus is indeed God. So nobody's walking around confused anymore. Wondering who you're serving. You're praying and you don't even know who you're praying to. You understand? If you're praying to the Father, you pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Because God says, the first scripture I read to you guys, he says, Jesus says, I, he gave all, God gave all power into his hands. All power into the hand of God. Yes, brother, I hear you. His, his eyes of fire represents the Holy Spirit. His hair like wool represents the lamb slain. His feet as brass represents judgment. Praise the Lord, brother. So I thank you that you're, 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 on, you're in line with what I'm talking about. So let me tell you something. Jesus is coming back and he's coming back for a prepared people. He's not coming back for a confused people. He's not coming back for people who do not know whether he's God or not. Because at that moment, it's too late. I am sorry. It is too late. You have the time right now. This is the prophecy. Everybody who's running after a word, running after a prophecy, it's right here. You want to know if Jesus is God? Go read the book of John. Praise God. And then turn over to Revelations. You need to understand. The Bible says it that, that, I mean, this is the true word of God right here. This is the true word, word of God right here. And so we have the enemy. The Bible says that the enemy has blinded. Our eyes, you know, blinded the eyes of so many that they, they cannot believe the truth. 
the truth looking them in the face and they can't believe the truth because their minds have been blinded. Well, we as believers, we will continue to preach the word and we will continue to pray that the Lord will open your eyes so that you will be able to see. I thank God that the eyes of my understanding has been enlightened because when I came to Jesus, I heard the word. The scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I heard the word. Faith enters into my heart. I believe the word. I accepted the word and praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me see what I'm Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Are you guys still there? I think I just lost my screen. Okay, we're still together. Praise God. So we have to just know that we, we hear the word of God. You understand? We hear the word of God and we accept the word of God and, call and, and accept it as the truth. As the truth. God is not going to lie to anybody. And, you know, I'm, getting, I'm so excited, guys. Like, I get excited when I hear, um, to, to hear about, about Jesus. Like, I mean... John 1 14 says, and the, in the, in the book of John, right? Everybody always talk about the book of John in the beginning, in the beginning from before everything else in the beginning was the word. <clears throat> the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. If without Jesus, not Namek. Nothing would be made if there was, if without Jesus, because the name of God <laughs> from the very beginning, from the very beginning is Jesus. Call him Yeshua HaMashiach. Call him whatever tongue you want to speak in, but his name is Jesus and his name is whatever other tongue you want to call him. Just do not say that he, you know, don't say that he's not God because the scriptures cannot lie. You cannot say you believe the word. And then when it comes to that little part, that is the part that is in, that is most important to those, to your salvation. The enemy will let you accept everything else. But when it comes to believing that Jesus is God, when the scripture tells you clearly, if you cannot believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. I read that last night and I said, Lord God Almighty, help me. Because man, sometimes you even forget. I even forget certain things that is in the Bible. When I was up at three o'clock last night going through the scriptures, I read that. I said, whoa, you shall die in your sins if you can't believe that. that why? Because it is by your faith. By faith are you saved through, by grace rather are you saved through faith. It is the grace of God that allows you to be, uh, that gives you the opportunity then or the privilege of being able to believe so that you can be saved. When there was a scripture that I wrote down last night, let me see if I can find it. Because God says, oh my God. Where there was the part where God, okay, so John, John, in Hebrews chapter six, I believe, Hebrews six. Let me look over Hebrews six and see what it says. I don't know why that is coming into my brain. Hebrews chapter six. Hebrews six and verse, uh, let's see, did I read that? Yes, Hebrews chapter six, right? So Hebrews 6 verse 13, for when God made promise to Abraham, right? Because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. God made a promise to Abraham that he was going to, he made promises, but he made a promise to Abraham. He says, I'm going to give you a seed. I'm going to give you a son, Abraham. Abraham and Sarah, Sarai, they were of a certain age, way advanced. And they're thinking to themselves, this is never going to happen. You understand? And they weren't going to have these children. They even tried to help out God by saying, take my handmaid, go into her, have a child with her. But that was not the promised seed because the, the promised seed, Isaac, in the Bible is a, is, a, is a type of Jesus Christ. It was pointing to Jesus, which was the promised seed that God was going to send into the world. So God made promise to him, to Abraham, that he was going to give him a seed and that all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in his seed. All the nations of the earth and God when Abraham says are you sure God are you sure this is gonna happen because I mean look at the situation God says okay you know what just to make sure that you understand it I'm gonna make a covenant with you because when God makes blood covenant it cannot be broken God cannot change and go back on his word and and Abraham would have understood that in his day because there was a covenant when they make blood covenant you cannot go back on it 
right? So God made a covenant. But when God made covenant with man, God couldn't find anybody else that was greater than him to swear by. So the Bible says that God swore by himself. He made, he himself come into agreement with himself and say, you know what? I'm going to do this. As a matter of fact, he put Abraham to sleep when he was making the covenant. Abraham woke up and covenant was already made. Abraham had nothing to do with it. You and I, our, we don't have anything to do with salvation. Jesus Christ was the promised seed and God sent him into the world and he died so that we might have life. He made that covenant and he fulfilled it within himself. So Jesus is God manifested in flesh because it was God that made covenant with man that he was going to do something, but the covenant he made it, he agreed with himself. He himself stepped out into time he himself went to calvary's cross and he offered up his life as we reread that he died when did god die if it was not through jesus christ he died upon the cross and therefore as a result you and i now can participate and can enjoy the benefits of the covenant and that is salvation all we had to do was believe all we have to do was believe. Abraham believed God and the Bible says it was accounted unto him for righteousness. He believed God and it was credited to his account as righteousness. If you and I believe God, if we believe that Jesus is who he is, if we believe that what he did upon Calvary's cross is sufficient payment for our sins, we too will have the credit written to our accounts that we have eternal life in the name of Jesus. That's all it takes to be saved. It doesn't, that's all it takes. It's your faith in God. It's your faith in God because the work is already finished. Praise God. And that's a different topic for another day. But I pray that I actually helped you guys um, with this, this today. I'm so excited and there's so much more, but I always get weird out about staying too long on here. <laughs> oh my God. This is so excited. Um, this is so exciting. So we were talking about in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. It was God from the very beginning, right? All things were made by him. Without him was not anything that made that was made. And it goes on to say in him was life. Jesus already talks. I am the life in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Jesus says, I am the light. All of that stuff. You understand? So in him was life. The life was the light of men. And you know, the light shines in darkness. His light shined to the darkness of my sins. Praise God. And, 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 and the darkness did not comprehend it. You know, did not overcome it, did not overpower it. My sins, my God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Echo, shama, mato, rokia, behendia. I hear God speaking right now. Praise God. My sins. Praise God. The, the, the grace of God. The, just like how when, when the light of Jesus Christ shines in the darkness, the, the darkness could not overpower the light. Even so, my sins cannot overpower the grace of God. Because the Bible says it this way, where, grace, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Every time sin wants to show up in my life, the grace of God expands to cover my sin. Praise be to God this morning. And so the grace of God is sufficient for your sins. It is sufficient to eradicate. It is sufficient to cover your sin. All you have to do is to believe it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, glory to God. John 10 30, I and, I and the Father are one. One. Unless God, unless, unless Jesus didn't know how to count. Unless he just did not, he didn't never, he never understood how, what mathematics meant. He didn't know how to count. I and the Father are one. We're, we're, we're the exact same one. You understand? Nobody needs to try to say, oh, well, it means that, you know, we're alike or it means that. No, we're one. I and the Father are one. If you see me, because that's why he would go on to say, if you see me, you've seen the Father. How is it that I've been so long time with you and yet you don't know me? And you say, show us the Father. What's wrong with you? Don't you realize that if you see me, you see the Father also because we're one? Praise God. 
praise God. The light, the light is a standard of righteousness. Yes. Praise God. The light of God's grace and of, of, of God's righteousness shining into our dark place of, of our hearts, which is into our sin. Praise God. And that's how he's able to remove that sin. Praise God. And so the sin had no, cannot, cannot overpower that. The, the righteousness of God covers your sin, praise God, because that was the divine exchange that happened at Calvary's cross where Jesus took your old filthy garment and he gave you the garment of pure white. He took away your, your sinfulness and he gave you his garment of righteousness. Amen. There was a divine exchange that happened. Praise God. Salvation is, it's, it, it, it seems complicated, but it's a very simple factor. But it was not a simple maneuver that God had to go through in order to bring this to pass. And that's why it's so hard for some people to not to understand because they're thinking, how could God, like, how could God, but I, I find it so simple. I'm thinking, God, that was a tremendous, that was a great idea. That was an awesome idea. How did you come up with that? Oh, and I, who was it? Who was it? Who was it that asked the question about wisdom and all that stuff? That's another one. Because when we talk about wisdom, the wisdom of God, Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. And when God says, let us make man in our image, he was having a, uh, he was having a conversation with himself. He was reasoning with his wisdom. Amen. With his wisdom, that's why the Bible says that without Jesus was not anything made that was made. How can God make anything without wisdom? It took wisdom to put a plan like this together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You can't separate the two. You cannot separate God from his wisdom. Praise God. You cannot separate Jesus from God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say unto you before Abraham was, we went through all those scriptures before. Praise God. Is there any questions? Is there anybody who wants to say something, type something? I wish there was a way to bring everybody on screen. Is there any questions? Brother Renex, what do you have to say? Praise God. Can I bring you on screen, Brother Renex? You don't have to accept if you don't want to, but if you want to, you can. Praise the name of Jesus. I watched that video that you mentioned the other day with that gentleman that was talking um, about the name of Jesus. Praise God. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm so grateful for this day. Actually, I'm really grateful that we had a chance to go through this and to talk about this. I believe that God is, um, as I said, Jesus, G the, the, this is what the Lord is putting in my spirit, really, that he it is this time in this season, he wants people to know him. He wants people to know his name. And he wants people to accept him as Lord and Savior. And accept him as who he is. He is not just your Lord. He's not just your Savior. He is Lord and he is Savior. And the Bible talks about God, you know, who is our Savior. You understand it is God that is our Savior, and yet we know that Jesus Christ is the Savior, and Him and His Father are one. Praise God. They're one and the same. When we worship Jesus, we're not, we're not, it's not idol worship. You're not worshiping idol because you're calling on the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, there is no other way to get to the Father but through Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. So how else would you talk to the Father unless you go through Jesus Christ? You understand, you, only, you will not get, you're not going to have an audience with the Father outside of, 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 of Christ. You just can't. There's no way. There's, it's, it's impossible. So we need Jesus Christ. We need to accept him as Lord and Savior. We need to accept him as Lord and Savior. I'm trying to charge my phone. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I mean, I pray that this has helped you guys today. I pray that. 
John. Okay, so we looked at that already. I'm trying to see if there's anything that I am um, that I, I miss out here, guys. Praise God. I think I, I think one of the questions that was put up there was Mark chapter 10 and verse 18, where it says, Jesus says, Why callest thou me God? Are good, right? No, good, good, uh, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that's God. And so that would look as if he's trying to say, well, he's not God because he says there's none good but God. But a lot of times people don't understand when Jesus uh, when Jesus talks, right? A lot of if somebody when when the, the 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 individual who came and spoke with Jesus at that time and say good master, good master, you know, Jesus knew in that moment that. He was not talking to him as God. He was really just looking at the flesh, him, the man outside, and saying, good master. But the thing is, Jesus is going to bring it to your attention somehow. How is it that you're calling me good? Do you even believe that I am God? You understand? Because if you're calling me good, there's only one good but God. So what are you trying to say then? Do you believe? Do you know that I am God? Right? Jesus Christ flesh of god flesh of man jesus christ was was um was was flesh in flesh he's he's a man right he came in flesh as a man had flesh flesh and blood you understand he had flesh and blood but when he when he died upon the cross and he was resurrected and when the disciples came and he came to the door and they came in and he, and he came to the he just appeared the door was closed and he appeared through they say to him you know he, they were all panicked and scared now but jesus says to him um, you, you handle me, touch me, because flesh and bones, you understand? Flesh and bones uh, do not, what did he say? Like, handle me or touch me, um, because he's, he, mentioned the fact, he mentioned flesh and bones as opposed to flesh and blood, because at that point he had no more blood left in him. All that blood was poured out. You understand? He was still flesh, but he had no more blood because he came to pour out blood for our sins. So at that point he was standing in front of them as just flesh and, 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 and bones. <laughs> you understand there's so much so much great things in the scripture and but when we read it's so easy to jump over and, and overlook some of these things but in the flesh he was still god and he was he was still son of god and son of man son of man the flesh son of god the god the god part of him so he was still 100 percent god 100 percent man that's why he was able to do the miracles that he did praise god Praise God. It wasn't like, oh, this man was just operating. This man was being led by the Spirit of God. And that's another scripture that the Lord brought to my, uh, my, my, uh, my mind. He says, um, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Right? So some people be like, why, do, why is Jesus son of God and then son of man? You know, but he is a son of God. He was fully led. 100% led by the Spirit of God. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You understand? He was fully led. He was never, ever in a place where he was not he was doing anything outside of the will of God or not being led by the Spirit. Everything he does, it was God in him doing it. That's why he was able to say to the people when they wouldn't believe him, he says, if you don't believe me, that I am he, he says, at least believe me for the very work's sake. Believe me for the work's sake. Look at my work then. And then believe me for the work that I am he, that I, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. You understand? He tried, he tried. If Jesus was able to try to explain himself in such depths for them to believe and know that he is indeed God, it was to Peter, he, he asked them and he says, who do men say that I am? Oh, some say that you're Isaiah. Some say that you're this, you're that. He says, but who do you say that I am? And he says unto them, Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Um, you understand? Let me, let me look up the scriptures because I don't like to misquote scriptures. Let me just go look it up. Let me look it up because I, like I like to be able to... Thou... Yeah, I think I quoted it right. Anyways, thou art the Christ. Peter said unto him, it was Simon Peter. So I'm right. Thank you, God. I still know my Bible a little bit. <laughs> Praise God. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood 
hath not revealed it unto you. This was not a fleshy revelation, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. Peter means a stone. And upon this rock. So listen to this. Peter's name means stone. And Jesus says upon this rock. Rock is Jesus. The rock is Jesus, right? He's that rock that followed the children of Israel in the, in, um, in, in the, in, in the uh, wilderness, right? So he says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus Christ, the rock of ages. So the church is built upon him. And in order for us to really remain, we have to believe that he is who he says he is. Amen. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, the Christ and the, 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 the Christ, the anointed one. Praise God. That is a title that's given to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. But Jesus is the name of God. Huh? Jesus is the name of God. And he says, he says to, um, that he, was, he revealed himself by many names over, over, over time, by na many names from starting over in Abraham where he says, I am. And then over time, he revealed himself and he revealed himself by different name. And finally, he comes down to Jesus and he says, he sh she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? Because he shall save his people from their sins. And the Bible tells us that there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved you will never again hear god reveal himself by another name that's it he came to us by his name jesus salvation save savior save his people from their sin you will never again anywhere you will see it written anywhere again where god came and give himself another name Otherwise, he would make him a liar. And God cannot be a liar. He gave them the last, the last and final name revelation of himself was Jesus. And then he says, and there is no other name given among men whereby we must, must, must be saved. You can't be saved no other way. You understand? It is only through Jesus Christ. So that is my faith. That is what I believe because that's what the word says. And I choose to stand upon this rock. Amen. I choose to stand upon the rock. And, uh, you know, if you if you are on any other foundation, the Bible says no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is the man Christ Jesus. No other foundation. These are scriptures, right? I, I hope I'm not misquoting the scripture eh? because I am. These are coming up in my head and I'm just saying no other foundation. Let me read it again from the Bible because I'm, I'm telling you the truth. When these come, I just first Corinthians. 311 for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid which is christ jesus christ amen that is it you can't lay no more foundation if anybody else come and the, the scripture also says that if, if they preach to you any other gospel than that which was preached by the apostles let them be a curse if you hear me opening my mouth and telling you another doctrine that was not in the bible then it means that i am cursed and I feel sorry for all those people who have been preaching wrong doctrine and wrong Bible and taking things out of context and using the word of God for filthy lucre, which means they're trying to gain money out of the word of God. And that's all they're after. And then they will tell, they, they, they will tell the people anything that they want to hear, tell them that they don't have to, you know, it's okay, you'll make heaven, you don't even have, no. You have to follow the word. You have to believe in Jesus Christ and you have to repent and you have to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have to accept him. You have to accept the finished work. You have to know that he is God. Otherwise, you shall die in your sins. Bible. For no one can lay any foundation other than that which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation. Yes. And when Jesus himself came upon the scene, he told Peter, upon this rock, Will I build my church? What was the rock? The revelation that, P that, that, that um, Jesus Christ, I told you that Jesus is the rock. And the revelation that Peter had, that he says, flesh and blood did not reveal it to you. This was revealed by God the Father himself. He says, he says, upon this revelation, upon this rock, will I build my church? What is the revelation? That he, Jesus, is the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Amen. That means he carries the exact same DNA. 
He is literally God in flesh. Blessed be the name of Jesus. There's no two people up there. You're not gonna see. You're not gonna see. Um, you're not gonna see a uh, three gods up in heaven. They don't exist. There's one. You won't find three. Because in in creation, we talk about God the Father in creation. It was still Jesus because the Bible says that without Jesus was not anything made that was made. You understand? And we talk about uh, the son in redemption. That's Jesus Christ who stepped out into in, as a son. He comes in as a son to redeem man from their sin. And in the church, he operates in the person of the Holy Spirit. And I don't even like to use the word person because it makes it look like there's three distinct people. And it's not. That's confusion. When he tells you that there is, you know, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. One Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hear, let me read, hear, O Israel. Right? The Lord our God is one Lord. One. There's not two, there's not three. One of them. One. And if Jesus says that he's just one, then how is it that we're trying to say that there is several of them? You know? And then, and, and, and then why? Why would I? It, it, I don't understand. Like, it's so anyway we pray we pray that eyes will be open and that hearts will be open and that the lord will speak and that people will hear the word of the lord and know because i think it's about time as believers especially that we're able to move on from the rudimentary things of the gospel the basic the the basic things like you know like believing in jesus christ like um understanding the the the, the concept of salvation and how it is that we are saved by faith are you saved through by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself it is the gift of god understanding that basic thing that you don't work your way to salvation you don't your hands will never be able to save you you understand it takes the right hand of god it takes him putting his right hand upon you he takes him up holding you hey by the by the power of his right hand it takes god it takes him and how does god do that he came in the person of jesus christ so that he can die Did jesus did jesus didn't spend much time um what 33 years he was on the earth and the first 30 years he was just a regular man moving around helping his father as a carpenter the last three years he it was when he got into his ministry fully and then he started healing people and doing whatnot until he went to the Calvary's cross and then he gave up his life. He laid down his life and then three days later, he picked it up again. Who can speak like that if there's not, if not Jesus to say, you know, nobody take my life from me. I lay it down of myself and I take it up again. That's God. Amen. So we thank God for the word today and I just pray that um, I haven't rambled on too much at the end here. God bless you. God strengthen you. And if there's any other questions, guys, I, I will be more than willing to go search the scriptures. I love the idea of being able to search the scriptures and to find um, the truth of the word of God. I know that God is real. I know it. I am not guessing. I am not guessing. I'm beyond that right now. I'm beyond wondering if this is true. I'm beyond that. Nobody can fool me anymore. You understand? You see, when the eyes of your understanding is open, nobody can fool you. And when you are spending, when you go into the word of God and anything you need, if you can turn to the word and say, okay, God, what do you have to say about the God brings you light. He brings you revelation of himself. It is his pleasure to reveal himself to you. It is really his pleasure. God is not trying to hide. There's no secret now with God. He wants us to know him. You don't understand as, as, as it was uh, Paul, I believe, that cried out, Oh, that I may know thee and the power of your resurrection, the fellowship of your spirit being made conformable, un conformable unto your death. And there is this desire and that yearning for us to know the Lord. And he says, if you follow on to know, you shall know the Lord if you follow on to know. So you keep on going on with Jesus. Keep on digging into the word. Keep on asking him for revelation for you to truly know him. You understand? He's not trying to hide himself from us in this season. God bless you all. And I just pray the strength of the Lord over your life. Father, may you just continue to speak to us, Lord. 
Continue to cover us, Lord, and let the grace of your glory, O oh God, reign in our lives and over us, O oh Lord Jesus. My God, I want more of you, Lord. Every day my heart is yearning and, and, and longing for more of you, Lord Jesus, just to get full understanding of who you are. And God, if there is anything that I lack, O oh God, if there is anything that, um, that I, I need further, Lord God, then please reveal this even to me, Lord. Open my understanding, Lord. Pour in your, your spirit in me, O oh God. Let me be full to capacity until I run over almighty God and father we ask you for those oh God that may not have the full knowledge or the full understanding of who you are Lord Jesus I pray that you will open their eyes almighty God because father God how can we follow you unless we know the way that is truly a question God that we want to want to post to you today Lord but you have shown us the way because you said I am the way the truth and the life and no man come to the father but by me so teach us how how to come teach us how to come teach us that we have to come in humility teach us oh God that we have to come surrendered in the name of Jesus willingness to learn willingness to 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 grasp oh God father God not with our own agendas in the name of Jesus my God that we come oh God Almighty not with our own motives mighty God that we do not try to search your word to disprove you but with an open mind God so that you can speak to us oh God in the name of Jesus Jesus, from the treasure of your word. Father, we give you all praise right now and we thank you. We thank you that you are God. You are Lord. You are the one God. Hallelujah. And Father of all, who is above all and in all and through us all. And we give you all praise for it now. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I surrender to you. I surrender to you, Lord. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. Thank you for revelation knowledge. I surrender to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your evening. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus.